Hi everyone, my name is Victor. I am a mechanical engineer and an enthusiast aeromodeller. In today's video, I'm going to present how to select an electric ducted fan or EDF by an easy method. Let's start. I am an scratch builder, so when I was trying to choose electric ducted fan for my scratch build planes, I found myself very confused with so many models, size, voltage, amps, power, etc. Until finally I thought a simple way to select the EDF. The purpose of this video is to show you the simple method so you can easily find the appropriate EDF for your plane. We are going to present what is an EDF, the truth versus power curve, the variation of truth versus the battery voltage, a step to select an EDF, example 1 the Falcon 2000, example 2 the Mirage 2000, estimating the exit air velocity. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let's start. A fan is a propeller with multiple blades. An electric ducted fan is a fan placed inside a duct or external circular case. This arrangement for a propulsion system like the traditional propeller put all integrated in one smaller unit. In this schema, schema we can see the multiplayer rotor that is rotated by this uh, motor through these shafts. This produces a high velocity airflow which is responsible for the uh, thrust produced by the EDF unit. Taking data from different manufacturers including EDFs with different number of rotor blades, KV, diameter, voltage and power, I plotted a graph uh, of the claiming truth versus the indicate power. Then this graph shows the relationship between the thrust generated by an EDF and the power that it needs to develop such truth. Here on the vertical axis we have the truss in grams and on the horizontal axis we have the power in watts. I found that all the data fixed in an almost linear relationship at the graph show here, which is very interesting because we use data from different sources. This is not so surprising if we consider the following equation. Uh, for a ducted propeller, this comes from reference one here. We said power is proportional to truth times velocity. So if the velocity changes in a specific range, we have that truth is almost linear with the power. This is what we see in the, in the graph. We must take in account that the data given by the manufacturers is for certain conditions and maximum battery voltage and no docks present. So the values are higher than the values that we can obtain in real condition in our models. Here we see in this graph uh, how the, the thrust uh, diminishes as the voltage diminishes. But the important conclusion is this. If you need to determine thrust, you need to determine, determine power. And this is uh, very important because once you determine your thrust, you uh, automatically has the power that you need for the selection. And another interesting fact is the in average you obtain 1.33 grams or truth for every watt of power that you supply to the EDF. Uh, the set that we are going to follow to select an EDF are uh, step one. Estimate the weight of your model ready to fly 
assume unknown values and check later. Step two, determine the thrust to weight ratio from table one. Step three, calculate the thrust needed using equation two. Step four, select an EDF from a supplier or vendor, base it in your needed thrust. Once you select your EDF, select the recommended controller and the battery. Step five, check the final thrust to weight ratio. If, if it is the decided one or better, if not, make another selection. Step six, estimate the exit high velocity of your EDF. This is an optional step. This is the model we want to build. This is Falcon 2000, which has uh, two engines, so we need two uh, EDF. Uh, for uh, example one, uh, then I uh, have to estimate the weight for the Falcon. I use this table. If you don't know certain values from here, you can use this percentage. And I, I get uh, uh, 1,502 grams for this estimation. The thrust to weight ratio is defined as the static thrust produced by the propulsion system divided by the total weight of the airplane. Then the following recommendations are based on my personal experience with different airplanes models that were scratch built by me. Then for a private jet, I recommend a, a thrust to weight ratio between 0.5 to 0.8. Okay, now here for step two, uh, as the thrust weight ratio is between 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, I will select 0 0.7. And then the step three, which is calculate the needed trot with my um, this ratio here, I can calculate then the trot. In this case, is uh, 1,060 grams. I will use this value to select a DF from the supplier. Now, uh, the step four, which is select an EDF. Uh, this table are shown pos possible EDF units for my jet. Remember that we have twin EDF. I select this one here, which has uh, 775 grams. And as we have two units, the total will be uh, 1,550 grams. And with uh, my expected trot of uh, 1,550 grams and my weight of 1,500 grams, the thrust to wave ratio is 1.033, which uh, this ratio is very well for the model because it is greater than this 0 0.7 needed. And remember, this uh, ratio is not permanent. It's going to diminish uh, when the battery voltage drops during the flight. For example two, I will consider my scratch uh, build version of Mirage 2000. It's about 960 960 millimeter uh, wind span. Uh, step one, which is estimate the weight for the Mirage 2000, I use a similar table. Then I get um, this weight, 2,068 grams for the total weight. The step two, which is selecting the thrust to weight ratio from the same table for a military jet with uh, acrobatics, uh, the thrust to weight ratio that I recommend is 1.0 to 1.5 or more. And in this case, I will take one, which is the minimum. Now step three, calculate the needed thrust with my total weight 
and my uh, truth to weight ratio, I can uh, determine the truth needed, which is uh, 2,058 grams. I will use this value of truth to search uh, units uh, with the supplier. Now, uh, select an EDF for, for the Mirage 2000, which my necessary truth. I um, search for several models, and then uh, I selected the last one because it gives me the maximum truss for the same diameter. Now, with my uh, total weight and my expected truss, I estimate the truss to weight ratio and give 1.25. This ratio is very well suited for the model because I need vertical climbing. However, the real truss to weight ratio after testing was about this 2,068 uh, grams. So my uh, truss to weight ratio final was about one. The exit air velocity or EDF. The air at velocity of EDF is greater than obtained with propeller. But without entering the complexity to calculate the air velocity based in the RPM, pitch, number of plate, air density, etc., we can approximate this velocity using this equation from reference one. I add the efficiency here. And this equation said that the velocity, uh, the exit air velocity, is proportional to the efficiency to the power and inverse uh, proportional to the truss. Using this equation, I estimate uh, the air velocity in the next graph. Here I uh, plotted the velocity in kilometer per hour uh, here the power and we see as the power increase the air velocity increases but not dramatically uh, the average air velocity is around 230 km per hour the maximum is 260 and the minimum is 203 I have no measure not measure the air speed so these values are mere approximation of course, your plane will never reach the same velocity as the exit air velocity because the draft force will balance the, the thrust. Anyway, as the velocity of the EDF are greater than propellers, we will have a faster plane compared with propeller propulsion. For selecting the speed controller uh, and the battery, follow the recommendation of the supplier. If you don't have them, you can see the videos indicated here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can stay informed on new videos. See you in the next video.